have known in Morocco a situation of transformation, a situation of change, which is an evolution and not a revolution. In some areas, some countries has been noticing a big change. In our case, thanks to our constitution of 60, 1962 and the political path we choose to follow since the independence in 1956, a multi-party system country, open economic system, and involvement in looking for peace in the world. So Morocco witnessed the democratic momentum triggered by the Arab Spring in accordance with its own specificity reflected by the broad political and national consensus with the reform process crowned by a new constitution which encored a new democratic right-based area. So as uh, Mr. Tagagi said, when we had the demonstrations by what we call le 20 février, les gens, la, the, uh, the young people in Morocco went to the street and their demonstration has been known as the demonstration of 20 février, 20 of February, because they started 20 of February. And uh, in many places in the world, the, the, the situation started the same way. But, sorry, but because it was a situation of change requested by the young people, it was uh, quickly listened to their request. Their request has been answered not only by the political parties or the society at large, but also by His Majesty. During this first experience of demonstration, the, uh, after a few, few weeks, His Majesty announced a change in the Constitution, and this change has brought uh, an answer to what was requested by the people in the streets. They were asking for uh, some creation of jobs. They were asking for a fight against corruption. They were asking for change in the process of the government. And I think that the, 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 democrat, the new constitution answered the most of the request of the people. So this is why we could have an evolution within the institution and not a revolution. One of the most important uh, achievement of the new constitution and in our policy is the empowerment of women in Morocco. Since the independence and since our first constitution, the equality of the gender is there. It is in the, in the law, it is in the constitution. But unfortunately, you know, we are a society of men and it is not very easy to change the minds. We did a lot, a lot of progress. And uh, I can tell you that really, uh, I am from Ministry of Foreign Affairs and 38% of the Moroccan diplomats our ladies. We are very pleased to note that we are over 12 ambassadors, lady ambassadors, but it's not enough. I don't say it is enough. It's a good start, but it's not enough. And uh, this is, uh, you know, very, very important because how can we change our country? How can we evolve? How can we benefit of, from all the, the, the the, 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 all, all what we can get if we forget about 51% of the society. Women in the world represent in majority 51% of all societies. And today in, uh, we have a law that uh, make it uh, compulsory for political parties to have a women representation. So this is uh, one of the most important uh, uh, aspect of our development, and we are noticing that the, the, the gender equality is very important also to improve 
the economic and social harmony of the country. When we can achieve all, uh, all the, the targets that are planning for uh, the education, the health, and uh, the job creation and equality in the office. <laughs> The other aspect of our reforms concern the Moroccan young generation empowerment also in the economic field and in the political field. Mostly the new generation in many countries is going out from politics because they have dissatisfactions. They are not very pleased with the policies that are uh, of, of the political parties. So we would like to make them engage in the political life, make them uh, engaged in the economic and social development of the country, and also do our best to create job opportunities for the young generation. But this is, uh, our, this is a process. We cannot, in one day, uh, resolve all the problems. We are a country where the young generation is a very, very large portion of the population. It is, at the same time, it is a very, very wonderful uh, opportunity for us to have young generation, but in the other hand, it is very difficult to create jobs, enough jobs, to give jobs to all this young generation. But we are doing our best. But first, to make them feel that they are more concerned by the, their future, we are uh, planning uh, and we already decided to make the 18-year eight, is the age of uh, right for vote, and 21 is the right to become elected. <laughs> The, one of the most important uh, actor in the Arab Spring, or if you want the Arab change, and the request for reforms came from the civil society and from the minorities using uh, the new tools that exist now in the world, which are the social networks, the Twitters, the Facebook, and uh, the people are now connecting to themselves and interacting and creating uh, new, uh, new opportunities through the uh, new technological revolution. So th th this also has been a, a big surprise for the uh, old political uh, elite that was not used to see such, uh, uh, such activity going through this uh, in the social network. And uh, one of the most important uh, consequences of the network is that, that they could uh, arrange meetings or create activities uh, in a, such an easy and uh, such a discreet way. And the other outcome, very important, uh, that came from the social network, it doesn't make any difference between men, women, employed, unemployed, uh, people from the cities or pe people from the countryside. So it, is, it was really kind of a democratic way of communicating that gets an outcome that uh, was uh, incredible. So uh, th th this is reality. Everybody knows what happened in each country, you know? And everybody knows the outcome that happened in each country. But w what is interesting for me is uh, to talk about really the economic situation, because this is very important. And uh, w w when we, we see what's happened and what can happen again in other places in the world, in our area or in other areas, is the, the, the very, very important consequences of the economic situation. And when it comes to the Arab Spring, I cannot help than thinking about what happened in the East European countries 20 years ago. If you all remember, 20 years ago, the Berlin War was destroyed. And there was a, a huge revolution in those countries in Eastern Europe. What happened then when the situation changed in Eastern Europe, we could see very, very quickly that European countries and the international community opened their arms to 
you, the, these countries in Eastern Europe, the, most of those countries are today member of the European Union. So politically, they find a home, and they could integrate a homogeneous uh, European society. And economically, they had huge, huge incentive. So what are we seeing in our area? We are seeing a huge, huge need for financing, huge need for economic support. But unfortunately, we have a lot of pledges. But unfortunately, we don't see, except the help from uh, the countries from the Gulf countries. And uh, f uh, should, I may say a few, few part of the help that was pledged by G8 Deauville uh, countries. But uh, we don't see that much support. So how can we consolidate the democracy? How can we work hard to make the, the call for uh, a d dignity in life, a call for giving jobs to the people, if those countries who are having economic trouble are now in a worse situation than they were before, maybe economically I'm talking. So we have to think about how we can assist. <laughs>